Traveling to Vietnam can be pretty daunting. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 25 tips, help make sure your trip is awesome and you can avoid as many issues as possible. I'm a foreigner that's been living in Vietnam for about five years, so I know my way around the place a little bit. I'm gonna group things up into categories like money, food, travel, for example. So let's get right into it. 25 things you should know before you come to Vietnam. Number one, you should have cash on you at all times. You're gonna need cash for almost everything. All right, and I have cash. There's gonna be ATMs and banks everywhere. You can pull out money, or if you need to, you can walk into just about any bank and exchange foreign currency. You should exchange a small amount right when you arrive at the airport, but wait until you get into town to do most of it so you'll get a better rate than the airport. Number two, credit cards are not always gonna work everywhere. Credit cards are gonna work at big hotels and fancy restaurants, but most places are gonna want cash. Sometimes even if you book a hotel online and reserved it with a credit card, when you show up, they might ask you to pay for cash instead. Before your trip, make sure you contact your bank, make sure your card is gonna be able to pull out money from foreign ATMs. Number three, bargaining. So you're gonna to wanna to bargain a lot when you're at local markets trying to buy backpacks or shoes or clothes, anything like that. Bargaining is totally acceptable and encouraged. Vendors are usually gonna start pretty high and see if you're gonna be easy to bite. So don't be afraid to go back and forth, haggling a little bit. You can have a little bit of fun with it. One thing to know about the goods at the market, most of the time they're obviously not real. Sometimes they're real, but they have slight defects. Most of the times they're fake, but they're pretty good quality. The main thing to know is just to check everything good before you buy it. Make sure you test the zippers, feel around on the shoes, make sure it's not really obviously bad quality and you should be okay for the most part. Number four, tipping. So tipping is definitely not necessary. It's not a part of the culture. If you give someone extra money, they're more likely to be confused why you've given them the wrong amount rather than grateful for a tip that you've given them. Number five, beggars. Okay, so not to be a bummer here, but almost everywhere you go, touristy places in Vietnam, you're gonna run into kids that are asking for money out on the streets. So for the most part, I try to avoid giving money to kids. They're almost always gonna be out during the day when they should be at school, or they're up late at night when they should be in bed already. They're gonna take the money, give it back to their parents, and the parents might use the money completely appropriately, but it's not a good habit to support by giving money to the kids. On the other hand, there's a lot of old ladies that'll go around and try to sell really cheap things like Q-tips or gum or little snacks. So you can support them by giving them 15 or 20K, which is about a dollar, and they'll give you a little snack in return. Number six, we're gonna switch it up and talk about coffee a little bit. So Vietnam has a huge coffee drinking culture. Anywhere you go in the entire country, there's gonna be coffee shops everywhere. So Vietnam produces the second most coffee to export around the entire world, but they mostly make Robusta coffee, which has about double the caffeine as Arabica coffee, which is probably what you're drinking in Western countries. So when you go to a coffee shop, if you get just a standard coffee, it's gonna look like this. It's really small. The coffee is really strong, so make sure you don't try to drink two of them. So because the coffee is so strong and bitter, a lot of times they're gonna put some kind of cream or condensed milk. They're gonna add a lot of sweetness to make it easier to drink. If you're like me and you don't really want a ton of sugar in your drinks, you can ask for it. Eat dung or kong dung means less sugar or no sugar. Okay, now we're getting into travel. Number seven, download the Grab app before you arrive. This is the main app. It's kind of like the Uber or Lyft of Western countries. It's how you order a taxi from your phone. It's gonna be the main way that you get around. You can attach your credit card, so it'll pay automatically. You'll never have to worry about exchanging money and getting changed, so you can never get scammed that way. At almost every airport, there's a grab pickup point that's a couple minute walk outside of the airport. You can literally just show people on your phone, grab, and they'll show you where to walk to get picked up. It's always gonna be a lot cheaper than getting a taxi from the airport. Number eight, Google Maps is another app you probably already have, but you should just download the entire country on the offline maps. So you'll always have it. You never have to worry about service, so you can never get lost. Number nine, speaking about service, SIM cards are really cheap. You can get one right at the airport as soon as you arrive. Should be about $6 or so. We'll get you enough data to last you a month. 
Look for Vietel. Vietel is the best company. They're gonna be probably the only one that's gonna give you coverage up in the mountains and up in the, the more country areas of Vietnam. Number 10, flights. So you're gonna be moving around a lot within the country. So flights are really cheap and easy. They go from everywhere to everywhere a couple times a day. You can book a day or two in advance and they'll still be pretty cheap. So there's three airlines that you gotta know about. Number one is Vietnam Airlines. They're gonna be by far the best and a little bit more expensive, but always worth it. And it includes a checked bag, which kind of covers the extra price of the ticket. Just behind them is Bamboo Airlines. They're kind of middle of the road. Number three is Vietjet. They're gonna be the cheapest, almost guaranteed to have delays, super unreliable, so avoid them if you can. And finally, there's a brand new airline called Viet Travel Airlines. Don't book something with them. Avoid that at all costs. Number 11, trains and buses. So if you're traveling short distances between cities, Trains and buses can be a good option. Some cases, a bus is the only way to get somewhere. So to get from Hanoi up north to Sapa, you can only take a bus. There's two versions of the bus. One version is about $8 or so. The more expensive version for about $17 is way better. So in most situations, the price to upgrade to the VIP or the more comfortable bus is always going to be worth it. There's an app you can look for called Bookaway. You can see the picture of the buses and you know exactly what you're paying for. And you can book everything online in English. It's really easy. Number 12, Tet Holiday. So there's one main time of the year where you should avoid traveling to Vietnam if possible, and that is the Tet Holiday. That is the biggest celebration in Vietnam. It's the celebration of the Lunar New Year. The dates change every year, but in 2024, it's gonna be about February 5th to February 15th. I would avoid traveling at all. So the Tet Holiday is on the 9th of February, but there's a few days beforehand in preparation and then a few days afterwards where everybody's partying. So during Tet Holiday, the entire country shuts down. Everybody goes back to their hometown. So hotels are gonna be booked. Flights are gonna be booked and expensive. It's gonna be really hard to get anything done. So if you can avoid it at all, don't come to Vietnam during Tet Holiday. Number 13, visas. So visas are really annoying. There's a bunch of countries that have a visa exemption. You have to check and see if you're on that list. A lot of countries, you have to apply for an e-visa a couple weeks ahead of time. If you haven't done anything about visas yet, check out another video I have. I have a huge video that covers everything you need to know about visas. Number 14, driving on motorbikes. Traveling on motorbikes is probably the best way to see the country, but it's super dangerous. So you have to know what you're doing. You should definitely avoid getting a motorbike in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City. The traffic is crazy. You're not going to be able to handle it. You can go up into the mountains on motorbike trips or in the smaller beach towns like Da Nang or Nha Chang. It's a good idea to get a bike to go around. A bike should usually cost about five or six dollars a day. Anything more than that, keep looking. They're trying to rip you off. You're supposed to have an international driving license, but nowhere is gonna ask you for that. If you're driving around and you get pulled over by the cops, they're most likely just gonna try to take a fine from you. Don't ever give them your passport. If they threaten to take the bike, just say, okay, you'll call the rental place. They never wanna deal with the hassle or the paperwork. They just want you to give them money. So try to get it down to about 200K, which is about $8. is kind of a standard tip to get away from the police. Try to avoid giving more than that. It's unnecessary. Number 15, we're finally talking about Vietnamese food. There's so much more than bang mi and pho. I can't stress it enough. I think that you should try as many Vietnamese dishes as possible while you're here. we will be eating nothing but Vietnamese food from now on. In most situations, the name of a Vietnamese dish is gonna be the main ingredient of the dish. For example, gum gà. Gum is rice, gà is chicken. So this is chicken with rice. Bún bò huế. Bún is thin rice noodles. Bò is beef. So this is a beef noodle soup from Hue, super famous dish. The first thing you can try to do is to learn a few Vietnamese words for basic food items. So for example, 
gum is rice, boon is noodles. These are gonna be the base of a dish. And then different types of meats, for example. So ba is beef, ga is chicken, ga is fish, hail or la is gonna be pork. I'll put a bunch of words on the screen that I think are kind of common words that maybe you should know before you come. At a lot of local places, they're gonna be cooking the food right out in the open, right in the front of the store. So you can just walk up, check it out. If it looks good, just point at it, say you wanna try one. Everything's cheap. There's no reason why you shouldn't try as many things as possible. Number 16, vegan food or vegetarian food. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but it is actually available pretty much everywhere. If you're in any decent sized city, you'll be able to find vegetarian food. Vegetarian bang means are really popular. They'll be kind of scattered around the city. They're called bang mi chai. So chai is the word for vegetarian food. Type into Google Maps chai or nya han chai is vegetarian restaurant. You'll be able to find some options. Number 17, Vietnamese service. So service in restaurants is way different than Western restaurants. So if you go into a busy local Vietnamese restaurant, you'll probably sit down and nobody's gonna come help you and talk to you. So you have to yell at people, am I? And they'll come over, they'll know that you're ready. You literally have to yell out, server will come over and take your order. So don't be shy about waving and yelling out to them. Have fun with it, it's part of the culture, it's not rude at all, it's totally fine to do. Number 18, water. Like most lesser developed countries, you should never drink the water from the tap. You might get sick from it. When you order a drink at a restaurant, it's always gonna be filtered ice that they've bought, so you never have to worry about getting sick from ice in a drink. Number 19, beer. So this one usually throws people off. So almost always, when you order a beer, you're gonna get it served room temperature, if not straight up warm. Let me buy a warm beer. So just be prepared, ask for a glass of ice. The locals drink beer with ice. After a while, you'll get used to it. It's not that bad, I promise. All right, we'll talk about a couple things related to safety now. Number 20 is travel insurance. Hospitals are cheap in Vietnam, but if you have an accident, you're gonna end up going to an international English speaking hospital and it's gonna be pretty expensive. You should try to have some kind of basic travel insurance, especially if you plan on driving motorbikes at all. The prices are pretty reasonable for the coverage that you get. If you do wanna check out some options for travel insurance, I have a link in the description you can check out. Number 21, pharmacies. So there's pharmacies everywhere. Look for Nya Tuk. Tuk is medicine. So you can go into any one of these pharmacies, stock up on painkillers, electrolyte powders, things for nausea, anything like that. You can use Google Translate if you need. Show the person working what you want and they'll get you what you need. Number 22, safety for women traveling in Vietnam. So a few people have asked, how safe is Vietnam at nighttime for women? In general, Vietnam is very safe. I think just use common sense. Don't be walking around drunk by yourself at 3 a.m. and don't be flashing around tons of money and you're gonna be totally fine. Number 23 is dress. Vietnam is a very laid back country. Most people are not gonna be judgmental at all, so you can feel free to dress casually however you want. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be hot most of the time. It's totally fine to dress comfortably as you see fit. The only exception is pagodas and temples and the Ho Chi Minh mausoleum, for example, you'll have to wear pants. Number 24, Vietnamese language. Vietnamese language is very difficult and mainly because it's a tonal language, so pronunciation is very important to being understood. That being said, you can still try to learn a couple phrases. English is not very widespread anywhere in the country, so there's gonna be a lot of Google Translate, but you can mostly get by. Don't stress about it too much. A couple phrases just to get you started. Number one, cảm ơn, cảm ơn. That's thank you. Number two, bao nhiêu, bao nhiêu. That means how much. So in terms of asking for prices, if you use bao nhiêu, they'll understand you're trying to get the price out of them. The last one is a do, a do. That means where. So if you ask the name of some place plus a do, they'll know you're trying to find somewhere that help you in that direction. And finally, number 25, we're gonna talk about the weather. So Vietnam is a very tall country, north to south. 
so the weather varies pretty widely throughout the country. Crazy, yeah. crazy weather coming our way. So it can be pretty cold up in the mountains, it could be wet and rainy in the central, it can be really hot in the south, for example. In general, I would say pack one pair of pants, pack one rain jacket. After that, don't worry too much. Anywhere you go in the country, you can go to local markets and you can buy clothes and jackets if you need. Okay, that was a lot of information. That's 25 things to know before you come to Vietnam. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.